So there I was at work, I'm on my lunch, and I'm checking out the automotive news for the day. And I come across a video for a brand new Ford product. It's not actually new, it's just a new variation. Ford is now promoting their performance products. And they're trying to make their new performance vehicle seem better. And seem like it can do what everything else can do. That vehicle was the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And its variation was the Mach-E 1400 racing car. This is supposed to be the future of racing. Similar to how a few years earlier, Formula E changed the formula for racing and made electric open wheeled race cars. And now Extreme E is going off road in those race cars. And even Rally is considering going into the electric only bandwagon. But I thought to myself as I watched the video, what the hell? My ears are bleeding. Literally, the high-pitched squeal of that electric turbine engine is enough to drive you nuts. And I thought to myself, is this truly the future of racing? Is this the future of racing we want? And how is this going to affect every form of racing out there? And that is something that we are going to look at today on Auto. AutoWorks.net Autopod, streaming day or night, coming right at you, right here, right now. Welcome to the AutoLux.net podcast. I am your host, as always, Mr. Everett J, coming to you from our main website, AutoLux.net, where you can find corporate links to every major car company in existence, along with our world-renowned exterior design ratings, where every year we rate well over 500 vehicles from around the globe against each other to see who has the best design in the world and wins our coveted Autolux A Plus Award. And while there, check out and see who has bad designs on the Rusty Awards, who's copying who on the Copycat Awards. Read a book to your kids, rate a few cars, and hell, watch a few videos and listen to a few podcasts, all on the Autolux.net website. And we'd like to thank our main host, Podbeam, for getting this podcast out, not only to the internet itself, but to all the other podcast sites out there. We are on all major platforms. Thanks to Podbeam. So like we said in the intro, we heard that annoying squeal that comes from electric race cars. Then Mach-E. Now we had heard it before with the original Formula E cars. They were weird. They were unusual. They were, well, in a sense, they were electric. We all get it, some form of hybrid has been added to racing cars for a long time. Hell, Audi proved you can run diesels in Le Mans. And they won. But now, electric cars are going out into the world. Now, we've all seen through Formula E that it doesn't matter how fast or what changes you make to your car. Most of it comes down to who's the driver. This is perfect. The only time in the internal combustion engine arena that I've ever seen it perfected and came down to the driver were those two years the Champ Car Series only had Ford as a supplier. They had two different platforms, but only one engine. So then it came down to driver. And that's kind of like what electric cars are going to do for the racing world of the future. There will be a little bit of a changes. In races like that car, you get vehicles like the Extreme E. Now, battery technology has to increase to be able to make at the long distances that these Dakar vehicles travel. So long races like that are not ready for it. Touring car, on another stance, Tesla has tried to get into it with their electric GT. Now they have used this vehicle to do the Pikes Peak hill climb. Similar to that that Volkswagen did a few years ago with their IDR Pikes Peak racer. They wanted to prove that the Volkswagen ID brand was going to be big and it was going to make headways into the electric rig. These were going to be the electric cars of the future even before we saw the electric cars of that future Volkswagen race them up Pikes Peak to make a point but Tesla Tesla has never really gotten back behind racing series yes they were originally in the Formula E series but have since turned backed out now they tried to get into their own GT touring car series but unfortunately that has a lot of issues trying to get off the ground due to heating issues similar to that of the Pikes Peak race car it's a whole new bald game to learn how to drive them. You ask Formula E drivers, how is it different than driving Formula One? There's not a lot of them that can actually give you that de definitive response due to the fact that not hardly any of them have done dual citizenship in both formulas of driving, but there are a few who have taken part. And where it gets different for Formula E is the fact that you now have to watch your power gauge. Sure, it's great to get that Mario Kart inspired boost on those bad corners 
corners on either one or two parts of the track when they add them in where you can get a little bit of extra power shot through you to get ahead now they always don't work out because a lot of times they're on bad corners now this is a cool part now you're giving it the racing world something to look forward to it's kind of like watching a real life mario kart series hell if they're gonna have racing go-karts in the future that are electric and they're gonna have these power options similar to that in formula e you can make it even different you could put them all over the place and really racing could turn into mario kart just without the red or blue shells not to say that that wouldn't be cool but it could turn into that with the boost power one thing that makes it a little bit different than racing series but if you get into indycar formula one you get your power to pass or push to pass that allows you to get more downforce under the car so you can get around people a lot quicker this is something that gives them advantage they've had it for a few years so it's similar to that of the form e but like we said with the electric cars that high pitch squeal is deafening but formula one cars already have a really loud noise compared to other open wheel racers from indy champ car or even the later series of formula atlantic Companies are looking into electric race cars. Like we said, Tesla was there. Supra and McLaren are now looking at the Extreme E Series. Toyota is still invested on hydrogen. And last year, Toyota proved that you could put a hydrogen system into a Yaris and go racing. Hell, even Kaido Toyota decided to get behind the wheel of this thing and prove to the public that hydrogen cars can be used as race cars. And for that, I thank him. But not every series is great for electricity electric race cars would be kind of cool there's no gears so downshifting isn't a play it's stop and go seriously it's getting easier for people to race it's turning into what all other sports people say as a lazy man sport you get in you push the gas to go the brake to stop there's no downshifting there's no emergency brake there's none of that it's all about how good you can handle that car at a high rate of speed i know that's always been a part of racing but it's changed over the years take a look at the movie rush james hunt has a bloody hand because the top of his gear shifter breaks off well back in those days you used to have to shift your formula one car take your hand off the wheel at over 150 miles an hour to downshift now it's all electronically controlled sure you can achieve faster times but you're taking away that element of a human being being in control of the race car yes i get it as you're holding up to the steering wheel you're still in control of the race car but you're not in control of the power source and the biggest effect the electricity is going to have on the future of tomorrow is drifting true drifting is done through a heel toe maneuver it is not done by pulling your emergency brake i'm sorry to say that if you ask the former kinomitsu takahashi who just recently passed away on march 16th 2022 if just pulling your e-brake is straight drifting he would tell you no similar to me telling you no downshifting is where drifting started anybody can do donuts and anybody can pull their e-brake and pull a donut off. Pulling an e-brake is the easiest way to do it. Sure, electric cars, you'll still be able to do that. You'll be able to pull the e-brake and drift them. So drifting won't disappear, but the original conception of drifting will disappear. Just like how Formula One has now gone to electronic controls for the shifting. You're taking away that original control. All it is is stop and go. There is no downshifting. There is no heel toe. There is no truth behind drifting. And there is no true skill. If you've watched the series Initial D or read the manga books, you will understand this. And you will know why I say the electric car has a major effect on the future of drifting. Because you'll know that Takumi cannot downshift anymore. He only got to do is lightly pull his e-brake to pull the corner. I have many friends that use this when they want to go drifting. They just pull the e-brake. Everybody's like, oh yeah, I did that. I just, you know, pull my e-brake and slide in. I could do that in my wife's Suzuki. Okay? Anybody can, as long as the emergency brake handle is in the center. But when I take my little five speed out and I go head first into that corner at 120k and I downshift and heel toe through it, I know that I've done more. I've not only controlled my car through a drift, but I've used my mind to do more than just one thing. To pull an e-brake and pull it through. Do one, do the other. One after another. I've managed to downshift, heel toe, and manage to keep my power and brake going on that corner at the same time to get 
through that corner. This is one of those things that the electric racing industry will take away from racing altogether. Under Fawn Starts, racing has been around since the advent of the automobile. There's always been somebody who wants to go fast and somebody who wants to race somebody else. It's never going to die out. We're in a world of tomorrow when you don't have to downshift and all you got to do is just hop in and go. Then where's the fun? Your only real fun is going fast. That's it. Fast. Well, I can go fast down a hill on a pair of skis. I can go fast across the water on a boat. Go fast through the air on a hand glider. Like, you can go fast so many different ways. So what's the difference when it comes to driving? And hearing that Toyota is now looking into trying to find a way to add an actual manual transmission to an electric motor. Making it so you can shift and downshift in a power source, which is direct power and that's it there is no variation it is direct power and toyota is now looking into this that is something we have to look forward to we have to look forward to pioneers like this wanting to keep the actual sport alive wanting to keep the purebred vision of racing the difference that makes me a better racer than you not me myself but like when people tell you that because when you put somebody like lewis hamilton in a car from the 70s like a formula one car from the 70s with the gear shifter against nikki Lauda, who raced during those days. Who do you think is going to win? Lewis Hamilton may drive the car faster because the cars today are built faster, but can he shift as fast as Nicky could? It's the same thing with drag racing. They've all gone to automatics. Sure, that's not different when it's going into the electric world. Drag racing in the future for electrics is one of the few sports that may disappear. Because you think about it, unless you're putting a bigger battery pack in that, what is the difference between my dragster and yours? Slight modifications to the vehicle are the only only difference there's going to be to get me down that quarter mile faster than you. So, some of these sports could wind up falling by the wayside. Similar to that, how monster trucks were huge in the 80s and 90s and now are disappearing. Drifting blew up on the scene, but now it changes to the vehicles and our power sources, it may soon start disappearing. Consider the fact that eventually you're going to run out of Sylvia's 240s and 180s and still 80s in the world to go drifting in. Electricity may seem like a good substitution for the internal combustion engine. For select types of racing, it could be cool. Formula E has already proven that you can use the power source to go racing. Supra is now looking into building race cars, and new technologies are coming out of that, because after these cars do these races, you need to cool the battery down. We all know you had to cool your engine, but if you don't cool a battery down, it can catch on fire. And like we outlined in our fire batteries podcast, how are you going to put it out? Here's a question to the future of racing when your battery pack overheats and catches on fire how are you going to put it out on the track and safely remove it to get the race back underway if you have not dove deep into the electric car series and found that there are electric vehicles out there that catch fire in days after like days after are still smoldering we get it you can have the right products to put these cars out on the track but do you want to go pick up a battery that could explode at any minute the encasement and technology that's going to go into future race cars for electric power sources exponentially insane all of these things have to be taken into consideration whereas we've had over a hundred years of developing an internal combustion engine to be the way it is and handle the way it is we are just on the verge of electricity powering the race cars of the future. Formula E is its start. Extreme E is where it goes next. And from there, drift and drag. Nissan has already proven you can make an electric race car out of a Nissan Leaf. So has Supra. So has Tesla. But they've all fallen down on one issue. How to cool the car. Open wheel vehicles are the greatest example of how to cool your car. They have many, many different intake ports that can be used to cool the battery. LMP race cars are the same thing. They may be enclosed, but they could still utilize more of the airflow around it to cool the battery. Only because they're sitting in a single tub. Vehicles like the Porsche Mission R and the Tesla Model S race car, even the Volkswagen IDR Pikes Peak, all have to spend more time and energy in finding a way to keep the vehicle cool. You know, we talked about the future of the grill in our previous podcast. Well, the future of the grill 
for domesticated vehicle, for your personal use vehicle at your house, may disappear because it won't be required. Lower intakes can cool your battery off for standardized drivings, even long distance travel. But the Porsche Mission R, if you take a look at that, look at the size of the intakes on the front of that battery electric race car. Why are they so big? Because you need to cool the battery off. Open wheel race cars make it easy. LMP cars make it easy. But touring cars, stock cars, V8 supercar series are all going to need a lot more cooling. And where hydrogen can be cooled a lot easier than a battery, the future of electric race cars may lie in how you keep your car cool. They may look cool, but will they stay cool? So in the future, racing will be different. It will be more blood curdling as those turbine engines squeal in your ears. But the grunt and the groan will disappear. It'll sound more like drone attacks than cars going around a track fast. There is a future in electric cars to go racing. Hell, there's even a future in hydrogen vehicles as now they want to create the Extreme H series. But electric race cars on a grand scale are still years away until they develop a way to cool off the battery source to ensure that the vehicle does not overheat or explode and they can definitely maintain safety on a racetrack for all the driver spectators and safety crews we will not see an electric car racing series so for myself, Everett J, if you like this podcast, please like, share, or comment. Friends, family, co-workers, anyone else. And take a stop off at the website. Check it out and see how well you like it. See all the amazing things we talked about in this podcast today. And check out some of the vehicles that car companies, electric car companies, are trying to bring out to the world. Try and change our conception of racing for the future. Will there be racing in the future? Yes, but it will take on many different forms. So for myself, Everett J, and the whole Autolux team, check out the site, check out some ratings, go to the corporate links, and then sit back, strap yourself in, and hold on for this one wild ride that the electric racing world's gonna take us on.